Hello everyone, we have come to the last section for this topic, Uncertainties of Derived Quantities. This is where we are going to learn how to estimate the consequential uncertainty for expressions involving addition and subtraction. We are also going to learn about how we estimate uncertainty for expression uh, involving multiplication and division. And finally, we are going to also explore the method of numerical substitution, also known as the maximum minimum method. For expression involving uh, addition and subtraction, the final consequential uncertainty is simply the addition of all the absolute uncertainties of the quantities. So give a very simple example if a and b are given by these values and you're asked to sum up a and b what would be its uncertainty of the result a plus b in order to find the uncertainty of the final result we just need to add up the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty of each of the quantity. So A has absolute uncertainty 0 0.1, B uncertainty is 0 0.2, so the uncertainty of A plus B would be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.3. In your lecture notes, I also use the method of numerical substitution to prove that you will get the same result at the end. But more on how to explain how to use numerical substitution in the last part of this video. So for example 4.1a, if I want to for subtraction h minus k. For subtraction, you also add up the uncertainty. So uncertainty of H minus K, you just simply add up the uncertainty 0 0.2 and 0 0.2, so you get 0 0.4. So for both addition and subtraction, you add up the uncertainty. Example 4.1b. If you are going to, if you have an expression involving addition and subtraction, but the rules for both addition and subtraction are the same, so final uncertainty again you just sum up the uncertainty of each of these quantities, so you will get zero point six. Four point two, the next section. For expression that involves multiplication and division, then to come to estimate the final uncertainty is a little bit trickier. First, on the left hand side, you instead of summing up the actual uncertainty, for multiplication and division, you have to sum up the fractional uncertainty. That's the first thing. Note that after you sum up the fractional uncertainty, what you get in the end is the final fractional uncertainty. So to get the actual uncertainty, you still have to do one more step to multiply the fractional uncertainty with the actual value of the reading R. Let me illustrate. So if A and B is of these values, and you are going to multiply A and B, so the first step is to find, to sum up the fractional uncertainty of A and B and you end up with a fraction. So just to recap, uh, what is fractional uncertainty? Fractional uncertainty is your actual uncertainty divided by the value of A itself. So you do that, do the same for B and you sum these two fractions up, you get the final fractional uncertainty for R, where R is A times B. To 
to complete the picture, to find the actual uncertainty of R, you have to multiply the fractional uncertainty with the value of R, which you have to do beforehand. You have to do uh, separately. And then one more step. So this is an important step one that you have to remember. And one more thing that you have to remember is that your final expression must always be rounded up to 1 SF. So if you follow all these steps, this will be the answer for R. 24, because you round up 24.08 to the same number of decimal place as the uncertainty 1. I will reiterate all these important steps in the next video when I go through the examples on page 11. Next, in your lecture notes, I also do the same thing. I also uh, use another method called numerical substitution to prove that the result that you have will also be the same as before. Okay, but more on numerical substitution in the last part of this video. Before we go on to numerical substitution, here are some useful generalization which is a, sim a simple application of what you have already learned in multiplication and division. So for example, y to the power of n is simply y times y times y n times. So since for multiplication you sum out the fraction uncertainty, if you sum out it n times, it's the same as multiplying it, multiplying the fraction uncertainty n times. Okay, it also follows for this as well as for division, because for both multiplication and division, you will always be summing up the fractional uncertainties. So now I'm going to jump to page 12 of your lecture notes. Like I said earlier, the three examples on page 11 will be done in a separate video. On page 12, we are going to explore another method where sometimes because of the expression given, uh, it, is, it involves a mixture, number one, or it involves uh, other non-linear functions like sine, cosine, logarithms, etc. etc. So for such cases, we will go back to the first principle using the brute force method by using the actual values to substitute the maximum and value, maximum and minimum values into it and estimate uncertainty uh, using another method. So for numerical substitution, this is the method. The uncertainty will be given by taking the maximum, finding the maximum value and subtracting it with the minimum value and dividing it by 2. This will give us the, an estimate of the final uncertainty. Okay, let's use a parallel resistance as an example. So the effective uh, resistance for two resistors connected in parallel is given by this expression which can be uh, rewritten to this form. If you notice, this expression consists a mixture of both product, uh, I mean multiplication, division, as well as addition and subtraction. So in, in a sense, if you want to try to do it using addition and subtraction as well as multiplication and division, it can be quite complicated. So an easier method is to use numerical substitution. How does this numerical substitution work? Let me illustrate. Uh, give some figures. Let's say R1 is 50, uncertainty is 3 ohms. And then R2 is 200 with uncertainty of 5 ohms. So you are going to combine these two resistance in parallel. What will be the final effective, effective resistance? What will be the uncertainty associated with this value? 
So to calculate the using this numerical substitution method, what we need to do is find out what will be the maximum value for this uh, parallel resistance and also what will be the minimum value. To get the maximum value, we will take the maximum value of R1 uh, reciprocal rate plus the maximum value of R2 reciprocal rate and add them together. This will give us the maximum value for the effective resistance. We do that for minimum resistance, we do it the same way by using minimum values for the respective resistance. So you get a maximum value, you get a minimum value. So first we find the average of these two values. To find average is a simple way, we add the two values up and simply divide by 2. So we get average value of exactly 40. And this is what we are going to use now for numeric for this method of numerical substitution to estimate uns final uncertainty. We find the range of values that it can happen, and the range is of course given by taking maximum minus minimum. And because it's going to be uh, a range, so we divide it by two. we will get this value but always remember to round to 1SF so we get 2. So the final answer is average value 40 plus the answer plus or minus uncertainty 2. So a quick summary for expression involving addition or subtraction then we simply add up the actual uncertainty. For expression involving multiplication and division, the final fractional uncertainty is given by the summation of the individual fractional uncertainties. Lastly, for in some cases, we might employ the method of numerical substitution to calculate the final uncertainty. In my next video, I will touch on, uh, show you some work examples on that is printed on page eleven. See you.